You're going doing the deep cuts, bro. You little rat bag. I thought it was going to be ah oh, last three months. Everyone that thinks they're going to read the Bible never gets past that. And, and you know, Jehezaphat, Beth Gap, Fahazaphat. And and it's really One of my dull. favorite chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a vape? No, I was raised right. If I was still teaching, I, I wouldn't have had the motivation to get better. Comedy saves me 100%. Here we are then. It is time once again to dive into an innocent passerby's Amazon purchase history. And this week I've got once more a fabulously talented and very, very funny passerby uh, in the form of comedian Laura Smith with a Y. Hello, Laura Smith with a Y. Hello, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? I'm really, I'm all right. I'm also a bit tired. You know, you need about 17 coffees. Yeah. So I'm going to go from really sleepy to just anxious. That's my vibe today, I think. There's nowhere in between. <laughs> That's it. You go straight into it. Were you up late? Were you gigging last night? Um, um, I wasn't. I wasn't. But I don't, I don't know why I couldn't. I couldn't sleep. I'm not sure why. It's a bit tense. People really hunt far and wide for reasons that they can't sleep. And I'm not talking about insomniacs because yeah. that's a different thing. Like when people get insomnia and everyone suggests things, mm. it's really annoying. But the odd weird night when you don't sleep, which I'm lucky enough to have every now and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I will read anything into it. I'll be like, it was because I had a banana before I went to bed. Mm. That's why I slept. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I will. Look, I will find any excuse as to why I didn't sleep. Do you know what? I don't know whether I should say this on the pod because people will judge me, but I'm going to say it, right? I'm on I'm on healthy eating thing, but because I love vice, I've started smoking just for fun. So I think I've, I think I'm a bit, oh, I think I'm a bit wound up from it. So I'm going to stop. Yeah. I stop and start. So I'm going to stop. I've just gone a little bad run with the old. I mean, I just love them. Smoking is really bad for your health. And I, I've heard I, it. I, I, I beg you to give up as soon as possible. I would, however, say, Three nights ago, I bought my first pack of cigarettes. Yeah. In about three months. And I've had about two. Yeah. They're fun. I only have a two or three a day tops. 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 But then I stop. When I get to the end of a box, I stop for a few weeks because it's proof that I'm not a smoker. Nice. Do you ever vape? <laughs> no, I was raised right. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Vaping. What is vaping? No, I couldn't vape. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. It's just sort of a, a, a kettle with grape flavour, isn't it? I know, and, I know. Yeah, I know. It's but also the other thing about vaping is it's a pure hit of nicotine. The thing about smoking that I Is like, there nicotine in vapes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, oh, God. Of course there is. That's the whole point. It's a nicotine delivery system. Oh, I thought people were just like enjoying strawberry smoke like Care Bears or something. Oh, no. They're getting addicted to nicotine. But nicotine technically is super addictive. But in terms of its... Um, sort of detriments to your health it's the same as caffeine it's not really that bad but of course it's the delivery of it that's the disaster right so when you smoke it's a disaster when you vape it's proving to be yeah it's pretty, pretty bad yeah you've got lungs full of grape juice basically <laughs> but um they uh the thing about vaping which i've done is like i say it's an instant nicotine hit and you realize what nicotine is and it occurs to me that isn't what i like it, i like smoking for the smell the yeah. texture the socializing the time outside by myself self-destruction there is a little bit of (laughs) i'd love to pick pull apart and unpack self-destruction but there is this sort of thing of i don't know what it is it's just a little bit like it's cool well i used to be an english teacher and i teach romeo and juliet Mm. and you'd show baz lerman's romeo and juliet right Mm. and the opening scene of a very young leonardo dicaprio smoking a sort of Rolly and all the girls would be horrified. I was talking to teaching girls, going, "Oh, Miss, why is he smoking?" I would have to pause it, and then the rest of the lesson would be about, okay, smoking's cool. Yeah, know it. <laughs> <laughs> and you lost that job. <laughs> I know. But Miss said it's okay. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. The problem because you just think, oh, just it's cool. Where's cool gone? It's cool. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. No, no. Don't do it, but don't like, do go it. out with boys that do it. <laughs> but also do it a bit. Yeah. Um, okay, look, we're here today uh, to jump into your Amazon purchase history. <laughs> what I already know this is going to be fine, because when I asked you to log in yeah. while I went to attend <laughs> to nature... Um, you went I said is it okay do you mind this whole thing logging in and you went I don't fucking care <laughs> and I thought we're fine here I know because you told me you quoted some technology that yeah. would log you out I was like oh, it's alright what are you going to do what are you going to do I, I'm so terrible on Amazon I wouldn't even if someone hacked my Amazon account and bought loads of toot mm. uh, the volume of which I buy the toot I would just presume it was me like do you, do you see yeah. what I mean like I wouldn't be like oh there's been a fraud here I'd be like I don't remember buying yeah. the maracas and the giant 
like blow up dinosaur, but yeah. it feels on brand. This is what I don't understand about people who hack into like bank accounts and stuff. Like, and they do it, and then they t- they spend three grand on something crazy. Chip away, man. Yeah, get your little thirty quid, forty quid, and yeah. the chances are, whilst that's still a substantial amount of money, I'm not going to notice. Yeah, you could, you could, yeah. you could cuckoo that shit yeah. for a long time. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I, I'd spend it around like it's. I mean, we all know thirty, forty quid. You can do that at a paper shop nowadays without yeah. on like nothing. Yeah, I'll make that. I don't want to get to, you know, the cost of living crisis, but the the expense of golf magazines these days. Yeah. <laughs> it's really tough it's tough out there I didn't know you were struggling like that and yeah, here's yeah, you yeah. just Thank turning you. up I appreciate that being a professional <laughs> thanks Laura and you're sorry you're making me go I know yeah it's not easy to read about stoicism look it up Scottish chef lab. okay look <laughs> I'm going to dive into Amazon history mm. and the first purchase you made on Amazon was in September 2010 well, you're going doing the deep cuts bro you little rat bag I thought it was going to be ah oh, last three months this okay. Is one of my favourite things on the show. <laughs> Whenever people come in and realise what we're doing. Oh, we're going right back, Laura. Oh my God, you've got a surgical glove on. There you go, exactly. Just relax and you won't feel it going in or out. <coughs> the, the most of Dan Hicks and his hot licks. Oh, what an album. Talk to me. Dan Hicks and his hot licks is a really obscure sort of... Um, I'll name one of their songs. How can I miss you when you won't go away? And it's on a list of, is this a real country song or not? They're really, really cool. If I'm honest, this is probably, when 2010, I was probably smoking weed that this is a really good good album to listen to, Stoned. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and, oh yeah, that's brilliant. That's so fun. I'm, I'm like chuffed with that. Check out Dan Hicks and his hot licks. See? Yeah. You're a fan of yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what's good about this show. Sometimes people can be embarrassed and cringe, and yeah. sometimes people can go, it turns out Laura's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Oh, okay. please. I want everyone to listen to this album. Well, we'll share a link to it on yeah. the episode description. The uh, most of Dan Hicks and his hot licks. Which, which is, is hilarious, anyway. Fantastic title. They didn't call it the best of. No, no, no. The no. most of. Yeah. This is, um, this is probably, what, I've probably got to inherit this from my mum. That's one of her favourite bands. They're really good. Yeah. Innocent, Mr. Innocent Bystander, another great track. Oh, but really good. Do you ever feel the, um, the weight of, parental musical influence going forward because i do with my kids i'm trying to educate them like i learned off my dad about the beatles Mm. and dylan and the kinks Mm. and joni mitchell barbara streisand weirdly um (laughs) she loved but it it was formative because we sat in the car and i couldn't look at my phone with headphones on to listen to it and whilst i don't want to start moaning about you know our little phone bubbles have taken us away there's a bit of that isn't there do you know what i mean well we're we're we are a very musical sort of household in terms of it's really important to us. Right. We're saturated in um, our parents' musical influences. And it does... My kids hate my music. I like a lot of House and Garage. I like a lot of... They hate Jungle. They hate um, any sort of dance tracks I like. I, I love... Um, like they don't like Budgie Banton. They like a bit of Soca. They like um, Who Let The Dogs Out. That was the gateway into g- good music like that. But yeah. yeah. But what we did, we like, my husband is obsessed with music. He's a musician. So okay. what he does, we have we have silly playlists for the car, which we always add to. And then we have arguments and skip. And that's really poppy stuff. Yeah. Like they love him. Like a little boy loves Imagine Dragons. And then we're getting in a bit of Taylor Swift and they love Katy Perry. Any sort of anthemic sort of daft sing-along stuff. Yeah. But because 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 kids wear band t-shirts we decided to put um an album playlist of all the band t-shirts that we own together oh, that's delicious isn't that fun that's so the best playlist ever yeah so obviously i've got a spice girl i wear i've got a spice girls t-shirt a Chaz and dave t-shirt um i think i've got a blondie t-shirt but my bonnie my bonnie my daughter's got a blondie t-shirt she's got nirvana she's got ramones and alfred's got a guns and roses t-shirt did and they get the t-shirt do the younger kids get the t-shirts because you can get like, oh just because they're cool right because yeah. the t-shirts are cool yeah 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 so then because there's famously isn't it the story about um oh, what's that uh urban outfitters there's nirvana t-shirts or the ramones yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, oh they were a band were they and you're like yeah oh, 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 oh. and uh, well, have you seen that video of the girl buying a metallic she thinks it says metallic it's a metallic t-shirt <laughs> i've seen these metallic t-shirts everywhere so where do you want a metallic t-shirt and i used when i was a teacher i used to on non-uniform day like name three songs that like, i couldn't care less miss do you know what i mean like i mean as a punishment i'd say right shirt off no yeah, actually don't yeah, make it weird yeah that's weird don't do that but um 
so that's quite fun that we've done that. So Alfred, my boy Alfred, like a sweet child of mine, and yeah. so it's, it's quite fun that we did that. But it's it's a lot of choice. So we 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 love it when there's something they can agree on. They love they love Queen, and oh. they call "We Will Rock You" the crunchy song because of the. Tch, tch, yeah, nice. They call it the, nice. Well, when he was little, my boy called it the crunchy song, and we knew what he meant. That's such a great, but that's such a primal. Oh. A baby can get into do do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that oh. is just fantastic. Queen, who I say, yeah. So there's, there's, so we, yeah. Look, they will get into it. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I'm the youngest of a lot of kids, so I, I didn't really have much musical taste. It took a long time to find, forge my own. My brother was mm. into hip hop. My sister was into grunge. Right. The other sister was into pop. Then I've got much older sisters that were into sort of lovers rock and those sorts of. So kind you're of one of how many, how many? Youngest of six. Of six. Yeah. All lived together growing up. Um, two. My two sisters were from my dad's first marriage, but pretty much my mum. They were my yeah one. Other than being older, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and you're the youngest, rock yeah, bottom youngest. Yeah. Me also, rock bottom yeah. youngest. Straight into comedy. Yeah, that's it. Thanks very much. Didn't get enough attention at home. Exactly. Got, well, only got paid attention if I was doing loud, crazy things. Yeah. I think I need a stage. It's hundred percent. So, oh, oh, and I feel like comedy is my one sort of. I, it's like it's the first time, even though I started in my late thirties, that it was my scene it's yeah. my scene it's the first thing everything else was tag along it's really nice when you have your scene but also when you go and do comedy and you you meet your tribe within comedy you know and you're just like oh my god these people are like me and they've I'm been home. here the whole time I yeah i'm home i feel like so i always sad. say it's like i started my real life when i started comedy isn't that sad oh my god i love it well better late than never no 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 i like it and all the best comedians come to it late yeah. and ricky gervais um <laughs> So, uh, 1st of December 2010, Apple iPod Shuffle. Music's a big part of your life here, we can see this. Sony headphones with reversible housing for DJ monitoring. Ooh, mm. what are they? That's presumably... Uh, well, me... headphones. Yeah, that's... Some f- fancy pants well, Sony when headphones. When was that? that, that was... December 2010, so it's maybe a Christmas That must have been for my eldest child. Okay. She must have been eight. I must have got her headphones. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Or okay, a good. gift, yeah. Um, all right, fine. So you've got an eight-year-old at this stage. We're going to 2011. This is long before comedy comes along. Um, but, you know, you're still researching because you bought a Bible on the 29th of December 2011. The King James Bible oh, on the Kindle. I? The 400th anniversary edition oh. um, of the book that changed the world. Why, did I, why would I have done that? No. When are we trying to think? 2011? Yeah, 2011. Oh, I think I did. you know what? <laughs> this is so dark. My oldest sister died in two thousand and nine. Oh God! I'm sorry. So I reckon I, I I went for a little bit of a period of uh, discovery. Did you? Of a little bit of yeah, soul searching. I do I I do have faith. I do believe in God. Did it happen when she passed, or was it? Do you know what it was? I I um, you know this sort of weird. I went in. I went to a really dark place after she died at mm. Ovs. But you know when people have these trite phrases, I really try and really be. Um, specific and emphatic in my language because oh she's in a better place she's here she's there and mm. and I just thought well where what is this I just felt such it was such a sadness that anyone could go and it it was just such a hard thing to think about the afterlife or think about mortality and I kind of went searching a little bit and I think that I was in just this really dark place mm. and yeah. So you spent one ninety nine on a <laughs> yeah. Kindle Bible, and I thought, I, but everyone that thinks they're going to read the Bible never gets past that, and, and you know, Jehoshaphat begat for yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it's really one of my favourite chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do have faith. I, I can't, I can't deny it. Did the Bible um, help? Did the Bible cement it, or did the Bible just ob- obfuscate it? Because for some people, it can just be like, well, you like, know, it's, you so, say, it's so funny. I think anyone that's kind of a, a lit, anyone that. It has faith and takes any text literally. Yeah, is as stupid as anyone that doesn't have faith because they take it. They're both two sides of the same coin of like. Well, if we take this literally, literally, the Bible is a collection of stories of people, you know, giving their testimony or there's parables or events that have then gone through loads of sort of translations and mm. things get lost in translation. It's really hard to try and quantify the unquantifiable isn't it vibes guys it's vibes it's vibes as Ellison so, John said it's a viable thing yeah right? it's a viable so I I do I, I do really believe in that sort of vibe my parents are sort of really hippified and and um, funny enough when my dad died my dad died when I was really young and my mum then started going to church after that so but she's you know but so it wasn't really anything like dogmatic or put upon us or anything but there's some things you can't deny and I I find uh, there was a really good book with Osho old controversial Osho and he talks about 
But the reason people struggle in any faith is because it's only the moment of surrender that matters. Mm. So what people will say, you know, for baptism to say, like, I surrender, not, you know, and they and they sort of, get, sort of give it all to God. He goes, and that's the only time that matters. That's the only point you should get to in, in as a human is to come to the end of yourself yeah. and surrender to say, well, I don't understand. There's more to this world and a universe than I could possibly conceive of. Yeah. And so that moment of surrender. And I think that that is what I needed to come to. And it was really healthy to say, almost like not my will, but yours. And mm. you kind of go, and I think when people talk about in more sort of, uh, secular terms sort of uh, manifesting and surrendering and the secret and all those they're all everything's the same everything is using different language for the same thing yeah. which is trusting yourself accepting love yeah. um, kind of surrendering yourself to what can happen and accepting that you want the you're, you're vibrating on a level where the good things come rather than the the kind of antsy kind of frontal lobe sort of, oh, if I do this, I might get that. And if I do this, I might do that. And, and I, I had breast cancer, so I was, um, you know, uh, going to die, <laughs> right. possibly die. It's a couple of years ago. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's like, and then when you go, when you, something like that, when you're faced with your own mortality, yeah. you go, oh, I just want to be alive. And I yeah. really thought to myself, well, uh, I, I've, t I've talked about it where I say, um, where I was saying, I thought, oh, well, at least it hasn't happened to someone I love. And I thought, oh, and then I meant, you know, my husband, my kids, my sisters and all that. But I thought, oh, I don't count myself as someone I love. So actually, yes. I spent a lot of time during my treatment doing <laughs> another joke. But I say I did sort of hypnotherapy, restorative yoga, cranial osteopathy, I had a spiritual healer um, and I went plant based. I was like, cancer turned me middle class. But I, um, <laughs> I, I spent a lot of things saying, if I die or I don't die, I want to get rid of all this nonsense we carry out with ourselves. So a lot of the time I spent even, you know, I did the chemo too, but the, um, was about loving myself, really wholly loving myself. So it's a very big leap to make. Yeah. It's something which I struggle with a lot. Of course, and we all do as humans. You, right. And was it, was it the cancer then that, made you do that had yeah. you had this conversation with yourself before was that a real like well, of course You're trying to seek faith in different ways because by hook or by crook we all i i think I, I mean i don't like it when i meet people whose default mode isn't this deep down our core belief is that we're a piece of shit <laughs> 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 and so when you true. meet people that aren't like that you think yeah, oh yeah, yeah. well you know oh your parents still together do you go for runs <laughs> but the <laughs> do you know what i mean yes. but <laughs> When you when you no longer want to hold that in you, and that that is what you want, and you know a lot of there's a lot of shame, and I mean again, if we're going to go back to the Bible, when Christ is saying, "All right, well, I'll take it all. I'll take mm. this," He's trying to say, "Don't you have it?" And mm. we still can't accept that. Yeah. And there's loads of religion, you know, people then lay go to church every week and still believe that I'm not good enough for this all loving God. They're not getting the message. Mm. You can't escape. You cannot. There is nothing on this earth that makes you unworthy of love. You are wholly, wholly loved. And you have you have to, uh, there's a nice um, roomy quote where it says, instead of seeking love, seek and destroy all the barriers to love you have inside you. Let it go. Let it go. And it's hard. It's hard. But it, yeah. But I feel like I've done the work and it, I was f forced to do the work because I thought, yeah, I don't, I don't want to feel like I don't like myself anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And it's gone. And does that then help when you're doing your career? Your, this, this incredible new career that's happened. Yeah. Because you get under so much pressure, and you're going to go on these panel shows. You've done all. You've done all the things, man. Yeah. Or it's all happened really quickly because yeah. you're obviously so fucking good. Yeah. But you're going to get on those shows and see people who are top of their game. Yeah. And that is when the piece of shit goes. You are a piece of shit. Well, this is it because I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to diss any parent that had this generational stuff. Mm. It's about removing the mistakes from. It, it, I mean, I love brilliant. Lou Sanders talked about it in her brilliant show, Shame Pig, where, you know, and, and her book, but she said, you know, guilt is, oh, I did this, I feel bad. Shame is, I did this, I am bad. Yes. So it's, I, I'm good at forgiving myself. Yeah. I'm good at saying, I'm good at accepting and surrendering, which I wasn't always. It is what it is. This will be what it is. And if I'm absolutely rubbish, that's fine too. Mm. So I go with a very, I'm, I'm very present. I wasn't very present. And when I was at my cranial osteopath, I realised I don't really breathe. Yes. <laughs> Everything's speculative. My whole energy field's very much in the future. It's all there just in front of you. Yeah. yeah. And I bring it all back. I gather myself all back and I give thanks. I feel very grateful every day. So when I arrive at things, 
I'm just open and accepting. And like, you know, I did Would I Lie to You and Rusty Lee was there. Yeah. So you just surrender to the fact that you're never going to be better than Rusty Lee <laughs> because she's an absolute dream. She's so holy herself. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. You're going to get nowhere yeah. near Rusty Lee. Jimmy Carr, yeah, I'll do battle with him. Yeah, you could be. Rob Brydon, all right. Of course. You know, David Mitchell, okay. Mm. Lee Mack, fine. Rusty Lee, game over. <laughs> just surrender to what it is, Law. Your makeup's done, you've got your lashes on. Oh my God. Just be pretty. This is a whole new <laughs> spiritual ecosystem <laughs> yeah. built around the rule that you're never going to be as wonderful as Rusty Lee. So accept that. Oh. That's a nice point of acceptance, isn't it? I've had about nine epiphanies in the last <laughs> sentence. I'm having some sort of epiphany <laughs> gasm over here. All right, fine. Well, let's have a. Let's carry on having a dig through. Yeah. All right. We're obviously not going to find too much self loathing, but which is a shame because I love a bit of self loathing. Oh, there'll the be show. stuff. There'll be we'll dildos. Stuff. Um, and we. <laughs> that's more self loving. <laughs> um, uh, there's loads of uh, Kindle books as well, yeah. classic books. I guess this is when you're teaching English, right? Yeah, I bet there'll be lots. So I can see, come across all intellectual. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, you have got things like the Iliad and um, all the classics, basically. Yeah. Uh, the complete works of Charles Dickens for 99p. Isn't it incredible that the complete works of <laughs> Charles Dickens is reduced to 99p? A lifetime of storytelling 99p you know when you teach a level i mean going to stuff like the iliad there's nowhere to hide when you teach literature at a level Mm. and you have to come with the goods and there's so you know if you're i don't know teaching any poetry that's any reference points you know you 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 eventually have to get into the classics so yeah they they would be deep dives just for reference points i can't sit here and pretend i've read the iliad but you 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 need to to have a sort of yeah you need to be able to dip in uh, pretend you need to pretend yeah. that you know what you're talking about but I, I find that um really interesting i've always thought about that because i'd love to teach english um in a sort of hypothetical dead poet society robin williams kind of way yeah um but the idea of as you say at a level being challenged on stuff i would just be sitting there doing some hard googling you know what i mean mm. just like yeah well, that's a good question you ask and i would say and just like yeah. fine. so so did you did you enjoy the challenge of the kids when you're doing A level? Did was that was that good or did you just sort of find it exhausting that you're trying to get this syllabus done in your six week window or whatever? Yeah. And they're they're exploring and they've got these creative minds and you're sort of just going, Yeah, yeah, cool, great questions, but we need to get this across the line. Well, no, because that is the opposite. You know, they we I could trust them to go and read a text as opposed to a sort of lower school or GCSE class. You're oh. you you you're already trusting if they're at A level English that th- those yes. big things are in place. Yeah, you don't drift into <clears> that. <throat> they can analyse language, they can analyse meaning, they can read into context. Yeah. But what you're the leap it, the leap from GCSE to A level is a huge leap, even bigger than A level to degree, because you're teaching them to be analytical and understanding what this, um, you know, what, what it adds to the canon, but also what it adds to life. There's a brilliant Stuart Hall quote that I always quote, um, who is sort of one of the forefathers of sort of cultural studies, mm. who said, for any cultural analysis to be worth its salt, it has to ultimately ask the question, what has this got to do with everything else? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's what I was always wanting to push with them. Yeah. And you know, and we'd we'd really get into sort of really heavy stuff of of you know, you know. Oh, t- 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 I've taught Great Gatsby so many times, but t- teaching Great Gatsby at A level, the depth that you'd have to go to. I got something from that text every single time. It's amazing. More and more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, it's 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 a it's a really long poem. That's what I think. It's so yeah, beautiful. Yeah. The prose yeah. is so exquisite. But also, you know, for them to understand the nuances of not being accepted into a society and, under, you know, and and understanding that. And, you know, it was majority Asian and black students that I would be teaching. Where were you teaching? Um, in East London, right. uh, Catholic girls school. And, right. and, and even understanding it in relation to sort of things like aspiration, how much sort of social aspiration is aligned with um, proximity to middle class whiteness. You know, mm. that, that sort of... And actually, isn't it better? And when we're looking at sort of understanding post-colonial readings of things and poems and looking at great stuff, it's like to understand that how how centred that is and the importance of marginalised voices and really getting philosophical and understanding that in terms of a sociological yeah. way. It's, it's so powerful. You know I mean? Yeah. It's so powerful to do that. For them to understand their place in the world, not this like, again, I'm, under, I'm accepting myself as a white woman saying it to them, but I'm saying... It, it, Literature should teach us our place in the world. Yeah. And it's so reassuring because of that. I, it's it's so interesting. Have they, has the syllabus changed to uh, to reflect 
you know, more modern times? And has it changed to try and rebut that a bit? Because that that default, everything has to drift towards white middle class. Or is that maybe that's just a useful thing to teach and look at? And this is what life has been like for so many people. Yeah, I mean, of course... Look, it's 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 how it's how we read, isn't it? It's yeah. not what we read often. Yeah. Okay. And and even if you're looking at the fact that we still are struggling to really get canonical texts that aren't our white men. Yeah. You know that to to even understand that is 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 a good discussion. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And 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 it's and even to understand, you know, when even the, I don't know the meter of a poem is disrupted from iambic to decenter. Mm. The English language is is powerful. All those sorts of things, mm. you know. God, you must have been a good teacher. <laughs> yeah, I like teaching. I love ah, it. You're yeah. wasted on comedy. <laughs> no, fucking Stop losers. Doing late night shit on Dave. <laughs> Get back in the classroom. <laughs> oh, yeah, I try. Fucking hell, Laura. Um, I mean, talking of the canon, 1st of January 2012, Gangster Granny by David Williams. Uh, see, this is where the kids get in. There you go. The kids, you, said my, that. Yeah. you said that like you've got an infestation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the kids got in here. Yeah. Uh, they, they're all over my Amazon. Um, again, loads and loads of books. Uh, the Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Oh, God. My, that has got my eldest, who's, who struggles with reading. It's really got him into books. He well, loves Hunger Games. What year books. might that be? That's 2012, November 2012. So I, I know where I was in teaching. It was probably... I was teaching maybe first or second year. I I was charged with being a the reading advocate in my department, uh-huh. and I did a thing called Book to Big Screen, yes. where I got all the little naughty scrotes to <laughs> read books. And I, at the end of the month, if they'd read the book, we would do a the screening of it with popcorn and drinks. So we had a Book to Big Screen thing. God. So did that it was work? A, did they do? Yeah, it? yeah they, they loved it. And even if they didn't read, I didn't like it. Wasn't dependent on that. So we did lots of reading and and just to make them love reading and hunger games. I know it is that I. I have no snobbery around any literature because um. if if whatever gets kids reading and the smartest kid I ever taught at A-level just liked there used to be a Wattpad I don't know if it's still thing where people like fan fiction and oh, right. yeah, trash yeah, yeah. She used to read trash basically Fine. but she, it didn't matter it didn't oh matter they don't need to read progress to these things what it does I to your love brain. Hunger Games the way that it makes your brain yeah. start to associate and making all these synaptic links and my kids are sitting there we go to their parents evenings for both of them and they're all the teachers are doing is saying just please get your kids to read yeah please that's, get, it, please, that's it yeah. please god and so we try and do this thing we make them read for 10 minutes a night and it is literally like we're putting them on a rack oh mate I know. stretching them and asking them what their pin number is yeah and <laughs> but there's a breakthrough moment because they're so overstimulated as kids and especially today with screens yeah bah, 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 their brains are like it's a firework display and you're asking them to go to a museum but as soon as that that transition has happened you see it in the room and i say to them say 10 minutes it's never been only 10 minutes every time after five or six minutes of literal almost physical fights with my kids silence and they're in it and then you get Uh, 15 20 minutes and then it's like it's worked but it is such a battle to do i know i I really my youngest is six but he's he can't do it he can't focus and he can't read and he hates it and it's a lot of shame about it and everything but my nine-year-old was the same and now she's there and reading chapters which you go oh and my eldest child she's so bright but lazy at school. Right. But the reason she's always been able to do well is because she reads and she shames me into reading. She reads such great literature. Yeah. And I think that's the only thing, if I've done anything well, yeah. I've done that well. But I have that, like my dad's, I have a lot of issues with my dad's approach to parenting. <laughs> you know, his main approach to parenting was absence. Uh, part of that was his death, admittedly. That's not his fault. But um, I know. but his big thing was reading. Mm. And I, that, that's one thing I've taken from him. Like, thank God. And mm. I'm trying to do the same with my kids. It's hard, isn't it? 2013, Laura Smith. I mean, we've already been on a hell of a journey so far. I mean, we've really ticked. We've done death, we've done cancer, we've done religion. (laughs) um, We've done David Williams. What more could you want? (laughs) Um, We have got, again, loads and loads of books in 2013. Um, 15 poems by Leonard Cohen. I love Leonard Cohen more than anything in the whole wide world. Talk to me. I just love him. I love him. And... um, I met my husband online, and funny enough, it was, I think it was a Leonard Cohen quote that made him love me because it's like a bird on a wire, like a drunk in a midnight choir. Yeah. I've tried in my way to be free. We both saw him at Wembley, not Wembley, that's a like O2, when we first got together. So, th- one of his last touring concerts. I, 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 for all of the mad dance music, I like, God, I love Leonard Cohen. I think I'm deep down a little misery, and I, I enjoy being miserable, and I love him with all my heart. I think misery is 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 in, indulging your misery with music. Oh, because I'm a massive, you know, pre-racism Morrissey and Smiths fan. Yeah, and I used to listen to that when I was a kid. I think it's the best form of self-care. I love you're it. You're giving yourself a hug. People say you're miserable. It's like it's not quite like that. Oh, I wallow in it. It's a wallow. 
you know, wallows the right words. I love it. I love, right, I love Valentine's Day, right, and I make a big fuss for my kids and g- give them all a big fuss and make it all silly, right, because yeah. Instagram told me to. But <laughs> the, Whatever Instagram but, tells me to do. Yeah, but I just want to listen to, you know, like, Oh, I, I love I love an Adele. I love Dorothy. I love Candy. I love all the heartache songs. I'm just like ah, uh, I love pretending I'm heartbroken. I love it. Oh, I love it. I lean into it. I never. So, did you have lots of relationships then? Were you very much? Were you a splitter upper because no. of that? Oh no 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 no. I was. I can right. I can transfer any of my own nonsense onto anyone. Mm. I can be like, oh my god. I can uh, I just love it I just yeah. love it and I think you should just accept it you shouldn't censor those feelings I just think I'm bloody miserable I'm going to do that for a few days but it makes you feel so much better I love it it really does it really annoys me when people used to say that to me oh god it's such miserable crap and I'm like no you have no idea it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's just a sort of emotional tourism and sometimes yes it, you know, like, what a great phrase but it, sometimes it is real because you do feel sad cause yeah. of, but it's different like if I was say you know something awful happens in my life like yeah. my dad died or whatever Morris is absolutely not no, but, no. but then when it became a later sort of self I don't know it's a form of self expression or self identity I don't know what it is but you're working out who you are by scraping around in these feelings of sadness yeah. and it's safe you it's a bit see, like yeah. it's a bit like how we like cozy crime yeah. you know the murder in the cozy crime thing in, often in Scandinavia yeah. isn't really a threat and I feel like often with those songs and, and stuff like that yeah. it's safe and it's an emotional yeah I don't know I, I do I absolutely love it yeah, and, so. and people who don't yeah, just think yeah. mm, okay well you're a you know, just a rung below me. That's fine. <laughs> it's just an intelligence thing, Laura. Um, so, look, uh, 2014 now, there's a house inside my mummy. I wonder what's going on here. Oh, that's cute. Mm-hmm. So, I... There's a house inside... Oh, do you know what? So, I had... I started having babies again 2015. Mm-hmm. That must have been... You been, must have been pregnant. Though, no, no, I know who that was for. Okay. That was for my nephew, Huey, because my sister-in-law was pregnant. We both had our girls a month apart. So Huey was about two. Oh. So I bought it for Huey, okay. expecting Orla. But did you know that you were going to go again at this stage? Oh, no, 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 no. Did you think you were going to? Because you had the one... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 24, I wouldn't have been pregnant. I mean, yeah, we didn't mess about me and my husband. I don't know why. Yeah, but it was so funny because my eldest had just started secondary school and was really not feeling this pregnancy. Mm. And funny enough, I went on Mum's Net and was like, how do I get my daughter on board with this pregnancy? And Mum's Net were brilliant. They went, she's allowed to have her feelings about it. And I went, oh, yeah, of course. So good. She's allowed to not be on board. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the way she fell in love with her when she arrived. Oh my god, don't. She she so How old was your 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 pre-existing condition was what? 11 or 12? Yeah, <laughs> 12. Right. And Bonnie came along. Bonnie. You know, I had Rosie. I've got Rosie, Bonnie and Alfred. So Bonnie came along and when she arrived, honestly, when the midwife took her off to be weighed, my Rosie shadowed her, the midwife making sure she was taken and I thought, "Oh, they're fine." They fight, fight like cat and dog now, even though they're 22 and nine. They're hilarious. Doesn't that make your nine-year-old much older because she's trying to be like her sister? <laughs> well, she, yeah, no, she's just sassy anyway. I think the internet's made her sassy. <laughs> she's full of it. So yeah. Thank God the internet's bringing up our kids. It yeah, does yeah, it so yeah. well. They're so well. Oh, oh God, God does... I'd hate them to be relying on me. Um, it's a really nice, This there's a house inside my mummy. Mm. There's a house inside my mummy where my little brother grows. <laughs> or maybe it's my little sister. No one really knows. Well, someone needs to learn about ultrascans don't they <laughs> because you know ultrasound you can really find out yeah. um it's this is a very sweet book yeah that's and cute. it's got lots of lovely reviews and um yeah it's a nice thing because you do have to explain and it's interesting that thing about if your kid feels like that i remember someone i think it was Catelyn moran was talking about mental health in teenagers and you know dealing with a kid a teenager who's sad and depressed and the thing that all parents do is try and change yeah. it fix it solve it and the, the first thing you should do is go yeah 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 Mm-hmm. I'm getting better at that because mm. I've because you want to fix it. Got Instagram, you do want to fix we'll it. Put a plaster on it. You do that. How old are your kids? Twelve. Wilfred's twelve, and Edmund is eight. <laughs> Wilfred and Ed. Wilfred and Ed. I love Will, Will and Ed. Bill and Ted. Well, I love yeah. them. The um, oh, we got boys. Two boys. So you went two girls, then a boy. Yeah. So did you discover the nightmare that is boys? The night. Are you are you okay? My boy is my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Are you joking? He's so simple and straightforward, but. He can't handle emotions. Right. He thinks he can beat them up. Right. And he can't <laughs> yes. handle them. He can't. We were ha- we were just playing some double this morning together. And he, I was really trying to school him in, I can win a couple of rounds here, bro. Yeah, you got to learn. Got to learn. And he's like, <laughs> and he's just mad. But 
I do like to stress test them. Yeah, you have to. Mm. You, within safety, it's like you're, I always think like you're just extending their comfort zone yeah. like that. But it is really important to go, yeah, I, I would hate that too. Or yeah, that is sad. Yeah. I've got better at that. I always used to try and fix stuff for my elders. I think it was being a single mum and mm-hmm. feeling a lot of pressure myself. It's like, hey, we'll do it. And I never wanted her to, to feel anything almost bad. And mm. I don't think, she, but I saw this brilliant thing on the internet again mm, heard of that it. said, children can't learn resilience to feelings they're not allowed to have. Oh my God, stop it, internet. How good is that, internet? Why does internet keep doing this? (laughs) We give it such a hard time. Uh, We're all having, we're trashing the internet (laughs) and we're trashing the younger generation. And they're reading these little condensed nuggets of wisdom. Yeah, sometimes things filter through and you go, that's a really nice one. So you're like, yeah. Give it it to me one more time because then it'll go in. Children cannot learn resilience Mm. for feelings they're not allowed to have. It's so true. Yeah, so you just go, yeah, it sucks. This is hard. Yeah. Ain't it difficult? I've got to remember that one because my brain's like a sieve. <laughs> I know what'll happen. I'll get home tonight and go, oh, darling, darling, I had this great thing for the kids. Kids, <laughs> resilience is good in a... Sh- no, <coughs> hang on. Hit I'm going to call Laura. Hang on. <laughs> Hit kids, that's what it is. <laughs> Hit kids and give them chocolate. I think that was it. And get them smoking really early because then they'll be cool. Um, all right, look, let's skip on ahead now, Laura. Uh, let's go into 2015. You're a very moderate Amazon purchaser. Can I just congratulate you on that? Okay. A nice little it's nine... It's definitely going to hot up. Yeah, exactly. It always does. Um, loads of kids' books, basically. We don't need to look at all these no. things. Although, interestingly, games people play the psychology of human relationships. Oh, God, I love that book. Have you Talk read that book? No, tell me everything. It was the big pop psychology book in the 70s, 60s or 70s, I want to say. Uh-huh. And it really... I can't remember where I read it, and that was probably just some wider region on something. Yeah. But it talks about strokes, that we all exist on a system of strokes. So, for instance, say if you and I didn't know each other, but we, um, it, it gives mad examples, for instance. So, say, for instance, we are the only two people at the train station or a bus stop every single day. And we, and then eventually we get to the point where we go, we acknowledge each other. Yeah. Now, if you weren't there for a week or two yeah. and then came back mm. and I went... That would feel weird. You'd yes, go, would. oh, I haven't seen you. Because I've been acknowledged, yes. But he breaks it down that that's almost because you've banked all these strokes. That And then mm. you then talk to each other nicely. And then you go, oh, if you then, now you've hit a new level. So you expect mm. a certain level of strokes. And it's just that we're all on this system of actually just these interactions. So someone brings, I brought croissants. Mm-hmm. You know, they want a reaction. And all those sorts of things. So it, it talks about life in that sort of system and how we, we need them. We do need them and that's yes. fine. And so we, credits, banking up banking credits. Banking credits. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. almost a Black Mirror episode. But then there's yeah. also things where people talk about things that suit them. You know, a woman, not that might or might not really relate to my mother-in-law, sure. <laughs> but would make a big deal because she's anxi- anxious. Right. She'd probably make a big deal. It really suits her that her husband has these ailments mm-hmm. and she, it will, might suit her to sort of go, oh, well, you know, he doesn't dance, but actually she's quite a nervous person or, you you know, your dad's conditions and all those sorts of things. Yeah. So it talks a lot about the structures that we have in place that protect us basically. And that actually we can act, a lot of people can have quite sophisticated relationships, sort of relationships and kind of tendrils amongst people because mm. essentially we're just trying to keep ourselves safe have mm. these social strokes and some people learn very quickly that oh no you know ailments get them that or mm. it's like the victim triangle all those sorts of yes. things the at thing the top is, of the though, pyramid the thing is they all they all become it's all about making order out of the chaos and we yeah. talked about this earlier on with letting go and just letting yeah. it happen and what you're doing is every single every single situation you're almost applying rules. Well, this is where it stops and this is where it stops. Yeah. So for it to go to the next stage, I don't know how that would work and what I would do. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's interesting. It's a sort of cage that you build around yourself. Yeah. And, and it's totally true. When I was um, had a lot of hypnotherapy, when I was very anxious at the start of my diagnosis and I got this hypnotherapy, my hypnotherapist said this really interesting thing um, because he said, because you want to do the work, because you want to strip away the layers, because you want to be whole and healthy, you can't presume other people do. You can't, force the work on other people you can't want to have those difficult conversations with your mum about physical (laughs) affection or people build up very sophisticated walls that are based on I don't know how how they physically present themselves or how they keep the house tidy or how they control food people 
everyone is just trying to keep themselves safe. Yeah. So you don't make this because and actually trying to point someone's out or trying to get them out of there feels very hurtful because you're yeah. you're seeing through their structures or it's like yanking a duvet off. They're, yeah. they're safe in but those. This so, is something that comes up again and again with with challenging people with with racist or bigoted attitudes yeah. and calling them out on stuff. Yeah. The first thing you're doing is dragging them out and you're shaming them, which you know, yeah, obviously sometimes it's the right thing to do, but yeah. sometimes you have to. Well, in my case, I just fucking don't bother. Yeah. Especially playing golf. Lots but of people. I go, oh, forget it. But that's your, that's you. Mm. That's your choice then to make whether you engage with that person, whether you love them as they are, or yeah. you say, actually, it doesn't fit my um, value system. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. But no, so, you, so you remove yourself from them and that's okay yeah. too because they need to learn that their racism doesn't have any strokes or social clout with me. Mm. I don't like it. I'm mm. not going to engage with you because it's so against my value system. Mm. It takes quite a lot of inner peace, though, to be able to to leave something like that. Whether it's because you want the strokes of reassurance, you want to be yeah. popular, you want to be liked. Yeah, we're we're cavemen. If we are if we are excluded from the group, we could, that's equivalent to death. Yeah, that's that's something. Which, After millennia of evolution, yeah, we are that's equivalent to death being excluded from the golf group people please it even when it's bad people yeah that's the problem i have like when you're nodding along with the taxi driver who's saying something awful and you're like yeah. why am i nodding along why are you am I not stopping what? because because you'd rather not risk the awkward that's a horrible feeling that mm. awkwardness to sit and ride those things out and yeah. you know and, and and so it like i like I, my friend was talking about you know going to on holiday with the in-laws and her the other sister you know the other wife yeah really shows off and I said stop taking it as a slight on you just say this is what she needs to do to feel safe so I went on holiday with my mother-in-law she wants to plan every meal she wants to do this that's what she needs to do to feel safe and when you remove the fact that it's a reflection on whether she thinks I can cook or provide or whatever yes. I'm like no that's what she needs to do to feel safe yeah you don't bother like you try and remove that person that per- taking it personally I think a big part of that comes with age as well yeah of course and you just get to that stage where you go this is just this is their shit this is their this shit this is yeah. their shit man there's a, there's always a <laughs> you can always reduce these books just to a, a swear yeah. word based yeah, sentence. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it, for so, let go. This is yeah. their shit. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Why swearing so useful? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's the poetry that gives us a shortcut. To yeah. All these <laughs> it's, look, it's so hard. It's really it's always really hard, and no one gets it right. But you try, didn't you? You do try. You do try. And um, there's still there's loads more stuff here. 2016. Now again, nine. You're a re- you're a niner, Laura Smith. You're a niner. Um, a book, Pokemon, Duvet Set. I mean, this is classic. Um, what year stuff. was that? 2016 now. Um, Pokemon Duvet Pokemon, Set. Pokemon, yeah. That must have been from my nephew Huey. Right. right, you must have about a billion nephews and nieces. Yeah, quite you? a lot. Most of them are a lot growing up. How many have I got? There's a lot. Of them. Do you ever get all the cousins together? Um, yeah, we try. Oh, <laughs> it's a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Um, you have bought Lean in 15 15 minute meals and workouts to keep you lean and healthy Joe Wicks before he got internet famous oh no that lasts about three and a half seconds every day there'll probably be loads of diet stuff that lasts three and a half seconds 2017 now large dino hatching egg oh was that 20 17 oh yeah so I think that was when my bonnie was about really into dinosaurs bless her Oh. oh, she loved dinosaurs. That's so funny to think about that. It's a shame when they go through stages like often it's dinosaurs, fossils for my youngest. He loves his fossil stuff, yeah. and um, the you know looking at the universe, stars, stuff like that. There's a moment. There's a bit of wonder. You get a pocket of wonder, and then it sort of clouds oh, over. This is why because I've got I've got the nice perspective of mm. having a grown up person. I will indulge my nine year old daughter in any interest she has because yes. there is no one more wonderful and powerful and pure mm. than an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old girl. They're moral, yeah. they're sassy, they're, 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 they are uh, in control of themselves. They love horses. They love them. <laughs> and so she will have all the schleich set up. Shelves oh, will be built for her because soon she'll be an arsehole. She's going to get a pony and become an arsehole. Oh. You're going to make a little fox hunting, you know. She likes skiing and horse riding. I'm oh. like, Maybe I'm not there yet, but it we're getting funny. there. It's funny though how kids challenge your class, mm. right? So we had it where um, you know Beth just wanted to buy my kids loads of nice Bowden clothes, yeah. and I'm like, they want to wear full Adidas sports gear. Yeah. That's, so she's like, oh god, you like, know. it's that thing of going. I'm with your wife, mate. If, if, well, right. But if, if I if if my daughter do- if I could <laughs> if my daughters would dress how I wanted to dress them, yeah, yeah, my yeah. life would be perfect. 
<laughs> I would love to have them all in Broadway on Glay and cute little bowed and velvet coats. It's the fact they want to do stuff where you're going, that's not, oh God, oh God, I'm going to have to really compromise my, my class system here. But then hilariously, now, thank God ours didn't go up a class. I don't think I'd have coped with that. Oh, I know. I want them, I do. I want them fully um, to the manner born. I love them. But the... Um, you Finn get Taylor. Get no, oh my God. no, but she does go horse riding because we we live near some stables, which is nice. There's mm. just some. But Finn Taylor said, "Parent in made in working class because you're so public." <laughs> it's such a good joke. Yeah, that's but he's true. like, can't afford nothing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, I've always done caravan holidays, and in recent years, yeah, the middle class is because mm. they they're not Someone they can't afford centre parks. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And it's nice, but I I don't mind it. Mm. But I think it's mad. No There's one's got no more... money now. A lot more Volvos pulling up <laughs> on those camping fields. It's so true. It's so true. Um, all right, look. Uh, 2017, uh, we have got, um, yeah, Soft Touch Baby Dinosaur. Um, <laughs> so obviously dinosaurs there. Um, June 2017, you just got lit up mug which says, warning, official teenager may contain attitude. It's a novelty mug. Oh, is that... Um... So who would have been 17, te- 2017. 2017, who would have become a teenager? Don't oh, know. I'm trying to think. So who would have been, that they'd have been born in 2004? Yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, if you've got all the multiple nieces and nephews. Yeah, I can't think who would have become a teenager. problem. It's impossible to keep across all of them. Yeah. Um, look, um, 2018, you've bought a prisoner neck and wrist shackles and novelty jumbo ball and chain. I know what that is. Okay, if you're into this stuff, that's absolutely up to you. We're not we, going to judge you. We, the school I taught at went deep on World Book Day. Right. That would have been Feb, late Feb. Yeah. Yeah, so we, and what because we were the English department, yeah. if we didn't win, it was usually us versus the, the modern foreign languages department always got deep. So we'd always <sighs> want to dress thematically. So you'd get competitive. Oh, we were really competitive. It was a huge celebration. And, I'd, and it was so nice that it was. And mm. even... Like considering it was teenage girls, yeah. they went deep. It was a, it was like the Met Gala for kids, <laughs> right? And it, but so usually primary school kids, we went so deep. So I was Jacob Marley. I had oh. white face paint, and for some reason that year, which was just a miracle, it snowed on World Book Day. It's usually really sunny in March. Mm. It snowed on World Book Day, yeah. so we were a Christmas Carol. And we won. I was gutted. I didn't get, I don't think I got the individual prize, which I was really annoyed about. <laughs> I think Manon in the French department got it for something else. She did look good. But this is interesting because you've got teenagers doing well book yeah. day, right? Because they went, exactly, they went deep. They, some, it was great. But I really mourn this because my, my eldest has gone to secondary school. Uh, I don't really bother anymore. And I'm like, yeah, this but is our, you need it more than ever. I know, like, and our school really did. And it was really funny. And I think there's something about, it was a single sex school, and I think there's something about all girls school where they talk about the bitchiness, mm. but they stay younger for longer. They didn't. Mm. They, there was no shame in really dressing up for each other. People, a girl once dressed as Effie in Hunger Games, yeah. but like had the full wig. Oh. We would have a full parade outside. It was such a big deal. Mm. So and we'd, and we'd go as a theme. So we were all, um, my head of department had the full... Um, Scrooge gown and yeah. and and sleeping cap. But we these, loved it. These bits of paper, you have to bring them to life. They're yeah. living, they're whole things that exist, and you have to make them exist in be able to see it and oh. touch it and feel it. And suddenly, all these books come to life. It's yeah. so important. We loved it. And the library, the librarian um, Jennifer Bacon, shout out Jen, was so good because mm. something would happen where, especially when kids are prolific readers yeah. and really strong, and you're, you're, you've got it with your son, mm. where you want the reading age to go up, but the, then they're like the 14, 15 years where it's all like, the summer I went crazy uh, yeah. and it was insane asylum, or yeah. I tried to kill myself, and it's all like this bleak stuff. Mm. So she'd be so good at knowing how to up the reading level but keep the content nice because you'd have 11 year olds that really could read, and yeah. you know, and I mean, sometimes I'd Introduce books to kids. Like, oh yeah, I forgot about that kind of see, scene. Or yeah. do you know what I mean? But it was it was really nice to do that. So it was. I I just loved that school and loved teaching there. But yeah, and I was pregnant then, which is quite nice. When is it? Twenty eighteen. <laughs> so yeah, I had yeah, my yeah. boy on the first of April. So I was massively uh, round. So I think I was really waddling in some big dungarees as well. Which I was love fun. that. You're really getting into character. Yeah. I'm going to get pregnant with him February March <laughs> for World Book Day. I could be I'm... a big portly Victorian gentleman. <laughs> really yeah. yeah. It's perfect. Oh my god, Lord. you're making me want to go and read a book. You're oh, making yeah, me. Yeah, that's what good. are you reading at the moment? Do you, are you still a prolific reader? Oh, I'm reading I got a pre thing from it's called Fundamentally Mm. Um, and I'll I'll oh god I forget the author's name but she's written a brilliant book she used to be a 
she's she used to work in uh, about Isis brides, which is really funny. Yeah, right. So do you read a lot of nonfiction, or what's your main? What's no, no, it's a fictional book. Oh, it's it's okay. really fun. Um, and I've, I'm I'm going to read some more. Kate, I've got some Kate Atkinson. Oh, I've just and... got the new Jackson Brody. Oh, she's so phenomenal. She's. I think she's one of. Our Have best you read writers. a God in Ruins? Yeah, oh, it's incredible. We oh. named our second son's called Edmund after oh. Teddy in the book. <laughs> like it, I'm obsessed with Life Atkinson. after Life is so wonderful as well. Life after Life is is one of the best books of the last twenty years. Yeah, like, she's amazing. Also, she always writes books sort of Second World War, oh, wonderful. slightly repressed middle class people. Yeah, do you know, like Atonement, the Ian McEwan world? Yeah, I love, I love all Ian that McEwan. shit. Have you ever read Philip Hensher? No. Oh my god, he's an incredible writer. Read the Northern Clemency. It's Northern not set Clemency. in the Second World War, but which you know, I have to have murder or Second World War. Don't know why. Yeah. Um, but it's set in like working class Sheffield in the eighties. I guess oh, more nice. middle class because it's all a bit suburban. Lawns are immaculate. What's going yeah. on over there? Oh my god. All nice. I just so what did you say again? The name. It's called the Northern Clemency. Northern Clemency. I'll have to get it. Yeah. One of my top top books. Oh, wonderful. Um, twenty nineteen. Now, Laura, as we inch towards the dreaded lockdown, yeah. you're talking about um, kids staying young. One of the things I loved about lockdown was was it kept my kids young. Oh, I love. They were it. just paused. I loved for that it. time. Yeah. You know, and and the younger one made the older one just play silly games. Yeah. It was exhausting. Yeah. Make no mistake. Um, all right, loads of kids stuff here. Uh, colourful pony kids, small notepads. Yeah. She's getting into the ponies yeah. here. Um, oh, look, a selecto bottles. baker birthday cake, large number one, yeah. 19th of Feb 2019. Yeah, Just so for that, your boy. that would have been for my boy's first birthday. April 1st, he's born, God love him. Uh, is he really April 1st? Yeah, he's April 1st. How many annoying was, jokes did you have on I know, day? but he was born on Easter Sunday, April 1st, and my Bonnie was born on Father's Day that was also summer solstice. So they both had really mad special days. Wow. Yeah. The universe is telling you stuff, yeah, mate. They're a bit of magic. Oh, look, talking of the magic of having small kids, nitty gritty knit comb. Oh, yeah. <sighs> and God, Bonnie had some curls. Oh. She's got really tight, tight curly hair. Yeah. I, that's a great knit comb, by the way. Nitty gritty knit comb. You don't even, it's it's phenomenal. Mm. It's they really must, good. the people that run nitty gritty, there must be an office somewhere, hello, nitty gritty, who yeah. do the whole brand. Hello to them. Always available for sponsorships. Um, they must know when the knits are back. Because it comes in such peaks yeah, and troughs. Yeah, yeah. And there must be like times where they're like, guys, it's been a really bad few months. There's been no knits. And suddenly, boom, I know. Everyone's back at school. I can't believe the rage I feel with knits. I hate that sort of infestation. Yes. When we used to get anything like that, any sort of parasites, mm. my mum would do We couldn't tell it dad no. It had to be secret. She really hated. It was always kind of like, I don't know whether she thought it was some sort of value judgment on her mothering or well, whether he couldn't handle though. stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of shame on things hugely my mum was the same and it is because it was massively attached to you know being in a slum or whatever yeah, like yeah. it was seen as some sort of failure and, and seen as filth and, yeah. and not caring properly my wife goes nuts when the kids have had nits uh, I'm always fascinated by it <laughs> I like I love that moment I and mean, it's awful really when they've actually got one when you look at, oh once we we missed it on our second kid and he's blonde and then we, we, I just peeled back and it was like opening a hatch and just uh, seeing this little ecosystem uh, going, oh my God. Lifting a log to wood lice. I know, when yeah. you when you actually clock them and then it all comes in, I'm, I'm scratching my... Everyone's going to be scratching that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's the rule of knits. Oh, mate. Scratch. And um, so, yeah, a bit crazy, but um, I was going to say something else. Yeah, there is... Are you into pop spotting? as pop... Pimple oh, popping. No, no. Oh, For I some am. reason, I won't allow myself that indulgence. No, I love it. Don't get me wrong, I love squeezing a zip. Yeah. But well, watching, watching the yeah. videos of oh, um, it. I like anything like that. I like, I like getting into stuff. Purging. Yeah. Inner filth. Again, all celebrating that we're a piece of shit. <laughs> this is what we're learning to do here on the show today with Laura Smith. Um, so look, we're going to crash on through to 2020 now. Oh my God, we've already done an hour. How has that happened? Oh, like, um, shitty pay. So here we go. 2020. Obviously, it's a year when everyone goes crazy and buys loads of stuff on Amazon because we're all very much locked in at home. Um, and it's, you know, it's, oh, there's there's costumes yeah. You know, we're at home 23rd of March, which I think is pretty much the day it happened that we got yeah. the lockdown. Uh, you've bought a Peppa Pig sing along microphone. Not a good thing to buy for lockdown, mate. <laughs> no, that's funny. What were you thinking? Oh, no, I don't know. Oh, why would you, why would you hand them that when you're all stuck know. in the house together? It was quite fun. Um, a toy mop, broom, brush, and dustpan. Very oh, clever. Yeah, Alfred Might as loved well that. Get them to clean. Yeah, he loved all that. That's Little perfect. Love him. Um, girls, Queen of Hearts, fairy tale, fancy dress, costume, loads of costumes for the kids. It's all about entertaining the kids, which yeah. is what we all had to to do so much of in lockdown. Um, and then there's loads of plants, loads of plants in April. So obviously, oh, which, you know what? It was a joy. We really 
got our garden sorted, it's never been better. I think I had a slight mental breakdown mm-hmm. Love those. during lockdown. Just sure. a small little, little one. menti bee. Yeah. The, um, how long does it, how long does that, does that last? Well, do you know what? It was really funny because when we sort of started lockdown, mm. um, I was having work done on the house and... Then we sort of decided to almost be in a bubble with this mad person that just was like a cuckoo in the nest that just kept adding things. Great. And then um, it's like the, the, the my boss sort of galvanised. I was ahead of year at school, so there was loads of like mental health checks and sending laptops and sending internet dongles and even like more things than that. And then there was like, they worked out how we submit the lessons and Google Classroom. Yes. And then and then it was just like, uh, I was really badly managed by a poor line manager that would be like, all right, now you're doing reports. Right. This is the funniest. I, I, like, at least I had a comedy mental breakdown. <laughs> Everything was too much. Plus, I'd only been doing comedy years, so that felt very personal. Yeah. They, something else was put on me. I was at saturation point, and I went like this. I went, well, this is, I shouldn't even do an impression of someone having an actual mental health crisis. Because I went, I can't, I can't do it. I couldn't stop saying that. I'd actually, I went, I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. I can't, oh. I can't do it. But I couldn't stop saying it. I actually had an actual man. And I Laura. had, I mean, it was really bad. Yeah. It was really bad. So it was just this absolute overload. So I then phoned my GP because it was quite scary. I've got quite good mental health. And I phoned my GP <laughs> and he gave me, he prescribed some drugs because that's what they do. And then my sister-in-law is a neurosurgeon, right. my, my, my brother's wife. And she phoned me and she said, Laura, what? she went, please don't take those drugs. She went, you're not a depressive. These are things, I can't remember what they were called. Yeah. And she said, "You what you had is a normal human reaction to, she's she's Hungarian, so she's really funny. She has perfect English, like like a fembot English. She says, you had um, a perfectly normal human reaction to a multiple stimuli. Like this, yeah. <laughs> so I went, okay. But I pretty much, one of the, th- so I sort of was just curled up in a ball. We'd built this sort of snug at the end of the garage in the garden, yeah. which was a trash, but we had a great time doing it. And then we had this nice seated area, and I was like, ah, like that. But my husband, because we just find everything funny, he was like, he he sort of adopted this weird sort of Californian sort of like helpful person. He's like, hey Laura, you think you can do some? You think you're fit to do some chores? Do you want to try and do? So it's like I kind of through gardening sort of was like you know basket weaving, got myself back to. The so it lasted Nature. about a week or two. That is where I basically just had to get let my brain calm down again. And I think that that is how we should frame a lot of I think when we talk about mental health, you think in the same way you're not gonna be physically healthy if you don't do anything good. Yeah. If you're not gonna be mentally healthy if yeah. you're not taking care of it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it was quite a f- <coughs> another lesson in taking care of yourself. You can't just do this. I mean, I was still setting lessons, but I was I was a little bit of a drink, a bit of a basket case for a week. It just, mean, but it was just exhausted. My brain had fight short circuited. So yeah. I mean, I just I I you know, I've got fr- a very <laughs> very good friend of mine had a had a nervous breakdown and they talk about that sort of your brain is fused. Yeah, it fused. It was really scary. I mean, I think it was very light. It was a, it was breakdown light, if mm-hmm. you see what I mean. But it was like... Don't blink it, it. You had a lot on your... I mean, yeah. So you had, your kids were how old? Oh, I mean, babies, two-year-old. I had a two-year-old, then the five-year-old, then the teenage, like, oh, who was going mate. through A-levels. Oh. You know, the rug from... Um, What's it? And and I was ahead of you, and I was I was basically fielding mental health phone calls from other people, and going through a report cycle, and setting lessons and marking them, and it was like the worst of everything because all the adri- I love being in the classroom, yeah, I love being in the club, everything had been taken from me, plus work was going on in the house, and I just uh, everything had, but it was just so funny to, it, I mean, I, I, it's funny. I probably went. It was like I glitched. I glitched. My brain glitched. So yeah. Um, so you went gardening. Yeah, yeah. Gardening but, was really powerful, and it was the happiest time of my life there. Most of it was really happy, but just that week where I went, it, 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 was, it was. It happens. It's, it's fine. It's what happens, and yeah. it's this is good. This normalizes it and makes people, you know, think about how you if you physically need physio here's the physical movement you do yeah. if you've got this mental health people don't quite know what that is in your case as we can see got loads of gardening and also Nature. yeah but i do it now like after being ill with um the breast cancer and i think mm. and i realized how stressed i was in teaching and all that sort of stuff i now if i'm aggy or i'm anxious or i'm weird i just see it as warning lights going on in a car yes then I, and i go okay i remove stuff from my calendar i remove stuff from my diary i cancel so meetings important. i I, I, you know, I'm off the wine. I go, yeah. right. I, I, it's like I just go, oh, I see this. 
And I just see it like that. And that's something you've learned post cancer. Yeah, or yeah, post yeah, yeah. Right, Well, okay. post post many B and, yeah. and and cancer. That's really interesting. I think so many people have a you know an insanely guilt, a sort of big old guilt complex. Where like, I can't cancel that podcast. I'll do it. I mean, don't do it with this one. No, no, else. no. The irony is the next one today is cancelled. <laughs> I love it when someone. Flakes. Oh, when someone else cancels. Oh my god. Oh, Tom Segura's got a funny bit about it where he's just like, "Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> oh you're already about to walk out the house and I'm fine." You're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. It's like you'd be giving your life back. It's oh incredible. no. Um, all right, good. Uh, so that's 2020, and an incredibly difficult, challenging, strange, mm. but weirdly often oh, for many we people lo- rewarding. The rest of it, we loved yeah. it. We just exactly. loved it. Yeah. Um, and I can see that there's garden stuff and there's um, aromatherapy because, you know, you'll try anything. Um, and you've got, look, a medieval uh, styled outdoor fire pit. Oh, yeah. But we became we became cave people. Feral, I loved it. We wanted it. to look at flames. I love being feral. It, it was, for me, it happened when I was 40. It was like a sort of half time, oh. you know, oranges at half time for four months. Yeah. I wish I, I feel like there were lessons I learned from it that I've forgotten in the last few years. And yeah, what, keep remembering them. What you just said is really interesting. The droppable stuff and just being able to go, I'll just let it go. Yeah. Just not do it. Yeah. It's really interesting. I think I think we're getting to that point now where we're getting as as man the mania of pre twenty twenty has returned probably plus fat. Yeah. And it's good to try and remember it a bit and go, Fuck that was yeah, okay. Yeah, we were feral pack. this summer. We loved it. We had borrowed our mate's camper van and oh. we were we were ten days in the Austrian Alps this summer and the rest of the time we were just gidding, gadding about and it's great. it was great. We were in Northumberland for a week. We were yes. oh Whitby. Wild. Oh, we were wild. Whit- we just love, love a fire. Oh mate. Love we it. go to Whitby. My, my wife I proposed to my wife near Whitby on oh, Sands and Beach. Yeah, and we take the kids back Sands there. Sands and Beach are lovely. Have you oh. been to um Runswick Bay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. It's the be- Let's not tell too many people. No, don't Northumberland's a secret too. It, right, oh, well, I don't know about that. So Do you, you just North, let me in on that. No, Northumberland is okay, so better North, than so North Yorkshire. Is it really? Yeah. So that whole bit of North Yorkshire from sort of Scarborough down. Yeah. It's the thinking man's Cornwall. Yeah. Well, no, Northumberland's the thinking man's well, Cornwall. Well, I'm going to go. Well, okay, they're going to be our new Cornwall and Yeah, Devon. North Yorkshire's the thinking okay, man's Dorset. Don't tell anyone. Dorset. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, so no, have a great time in Dorset and Cornwall. Yeah, you go yeah, on down yeah, there. But... Good luck with the parking. Okay, yeah. so 2021 now, as we start to get to more recent orders, um, let's have a look around. There's um, Rimmel London, the only one matte lipstick. Take the stage, 3.4 yeah. grams. Shall I tell you why? Go on. Because it's my red. And any woman listening knows, or any man, anyone that wears red lipstick, you have to find your red. Once you've got that it. That lipstick, I have gone through the Pat McGraths, I've gone through the Chanel's, I've gone through the Charlotte's Hill Breeze, the Max. That is a that used to be about three quid in yeah. Superdrug, but it's been discontinued in Superdrug. Rimmel, matte red. The DM slides I get about my red lip. But Kiri Pritchard McLean refers to me as the queen of the red lip. Wow. It is the best. And it's discontinued in shops, so I always buy it in bulks of three, four, five, six. Whenever I see it, it's not always available or I get it on eBay. I've got a drawer full. This is like Potter finding his wand. Yeah. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. You've got to find your own red lip. So so you'd have tried other ones and gone, no, it's just not right. It, listen, it stays on. It don't go nowhere. Right, okay. I, d- I didn't realise lipstick was such an important... No, red. The proper lipstick. red. Oh, to get your own red, it's as individual to anything. Fent is good, but it's a bit too blue for me. I love learning stuff like this. So It's so important. Mm. Um, but now I know, next time someone's got a good lipstick on, I'll say, I like your lipstick. And yeah, go, oh, it's my red. They'll get, you'll get a story about it. As as compliments go, that, uh, is, that feels like a powerful compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's great. good to know, a, it's good to find a slightly niche compliment. Don't yeah, just go, yeah. you look nice. Yeah. Find a detail. Oh, yeah. Cardigan's nice. The blue suits your hair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. It's, it's, you know, Yeah, got to think of that. Uh, £250 on a tent, July 2021. Yeah. Here we go. We're off. We're camping. We're out of here. That's got to be... Wow, you bought two. Got I? one in July and one in June. You bought two Coleman tent octagons. 265 quid for that one. Oh, you are camping and festivaling or whatever. Yeah, you got this the... is... I reckon this is the start of Latitude. Okay. Last few years, Gigging yeah. at Latitude. Taking yeah, we kids. loved it, yeah. Everyone loves latte chews. It's the best. Mm. Um, the ultimate Cadbury chocolate gift hamper, Mega Cadbury. Uh, Is that th- September? Yeah. So, did you? When did you stop teaching? When's that? September twenty twenty one. That's when I stopped teaching, and I was ahead of year. So we we're all in the head of year office. So I know I bought that to send to my ex colleagues oh. to get them through the first term. How was that decision to stop teaching? Easy. <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> You're so good. Yeah. Do you know what it was? Because of the lockdown stuff, yeah. it was really. 
uh, it was really it took a lot of the fun out of teaching you had yeah. to submit things and I went back in the March IRL in 2021 and we sat and had a meeting about oh how to do this with active and they were all asking earnest questions I sat there and thought I couldn't give a flying fuck <laughs> so I handed in my notice and I thought fuck it was it was it because comedy was doing so well and you knew you had that to start? Not quite. I was hoping to get a script commission, which did make it easy. But, I, you know, I, I basically was sending myself in knots because I was thinking, again, all that speculative stuff. If I get this and I get that, then I can quit this and I quit that. And I had to yeah. separate the two decisions. I'm done with teaching. I don't know what's going to happen with comedy. Just deal with that. I, I am done with teaching. So I handed him my notice. So it's fine. Isn't that scary financially, though, at that point? Yeah. And then I fucking left in September 2021 and then yeah. got diagnosed with breast cancer. Couldn't work a few months because I was having treatment. So I was like... Fuck. Thanks, Universe. Yeah, thanks, Universe. But Tom Ward, I don't know if you know him, he was he was amazing for that time. After this. <laughs> oh, is he's he? the one that cancelled today. Of course he did. Because he's, he's, such... he's got a little baby. Oh, Leon. <laughs> well, just because he's so adorable and little. <laughs> pathetic. Of, Tom Ward, pathetic. Um, Tom Ward was just, he held my hand for you so much. You know when people are sent at the right time and he said, it feels cruel this time in, he goes, but there's something really divine about this parallel. Like he says, you know, and it was... It, it, I, I was going at comedy the same crunky energy I was going at everything else and mm. then he said there's something right about this and he was really amazing through it so you're this is interesting the crunky the crunky energy thing. I so want what, what, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. I want this I want that so wait, me, me. and you're just in front of yourself yeah with your breath yeah. with your thoughts everything and it brought hopes. it all back God, it was his spiritual healer that I went to he recommended him and he was amazing and there was just lots of stuff it was an uprooting to go back to a garden analogy everything mm. all the other stuff had to, all the residual crunk had to get out it's, it's magic cosmic I like it when you make words up nah, the I crunk like and the crunch it's very interesting <laughs> so you're doing that in, in about 2022 so you, when did you get diagnosed 2021 in September 2021 I found a lump oh, oh and I was God. like what the hell Phone the, phone the school up. I could get the job back. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't months. think I'd be better. If I was still teaching, I, I wouldn't have had the motivation to get better. Comedy saved me, 100%. Uh, now that's interesting. 100%. I've written an Observer article about it. Read it. I can't right, to go okay, to okay, it. Okay, fine. <laughs> Check the link, guys. Follow the link, for God's sake. Um, all right, good. So look, what we're going to do now, okay, Laura, as we get towards the end of our time together, this has been fascinating, <laughs> just amazing. I mean, we could have stopped after five minutes. We had everything we needed. Um... And again, I'm just I'm just enjoying having a sort of put on a personal level, just nosing your, your Amazon, which somehow becomes weird if it's not for the entertainment of the podcast. It's just me going. <laughs> um, you got some uh, flea killer. Oh mate, who is the flea? Yeah, oh. got a little. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> the lockdown dog purchase. Yeah. You know, oh, little, did you get a lockdown dog? Betty, Betty. Like, light of my life. What is she? A Maltese Pomeranian. Oh, She's a sexy little slut. She's oh, the best thing in the world. I fucking love her. Yeah. Did you realise you had the capacity to love a dog as much as you oh, do? Oh, mate. Yeah. I love her. If you're scratching on the sofa and then if you stop, she goes... Oh, yeah. She just tells you she's got different barks for different things. She's reasonable. Her recall. Yeah. She is beautiful. She, she fell into a carb coma last night. We made homemade pizzas last night. Yeah. And everything went quiet. And we realised she was like... Oh. <laughs> she'd got up and ate the like, leftover pizza. She's a little minx. <laughs> dog in a carb coma it's a very yeah. pleasing thing yeah you've got to get a dog even in lockdown I mean got everyone got one in lockdown yeah. um, 90 pounds on lipstick here 90 quid yeah. on getting Rimmel yeah. lipstick you are serious about the lipstick stuff Yeah. let's look at your last few orders alright here we go so we're going to go into the last few uh, books now you're right so you mentioned earlier on uh, loads of audio books because yeah. you've obviously realised you've got loads of credits because I didn't I didn't even know it was going out I didn't yeah. sign up to it yeah. I now put reminders in my Google Cal you know because I always do three month subscription to the times and I've got I've got a date you know I've got to cancel these fucking subscriptions and yeah. I don't much money on stupid things you can do that now you can look at your list of subscriptions and mm. sort yourself out yeah um, you've bought a, a pro ring which is a, a frisbee basically got oh we lost them divs yeah. we love a frisbee we live opposite a field frisbees are the sort of toy version of a mayfly they have a very short shelf life I oh, know yeah yeah they, yeah they all get they, frisbees they, they don't want to be anywhere near you no. they like birds set them free man because yeah. you're never going to have them for yeah, more than a month yeah just accept it yeah oh god I've lost so many frisbees <sighs> I just lose everything. <laughs> That's why Amazon's great. Yeah. Just get it back on Amazon. Yeah. Look, Laura, uh, the final thing that I'm going to pick up that you bought in 2024, of course, this year. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how we, you know, tell the story of you through this. If you look at what you started with, and and what you've now got very very recently, right? So, oh, hang on. Interestingly, this has gone to someone else. This has gone to someone called Fiona. So, is this not for you? It's an apple slicer. Is that oh, for you, Fiona? Fiona Grierson is 
um, a, the mother yeah. of a dear friend, um, Sandy Grierson, who's a brilliant actor, mm. and he lives down south. He's Scottish, and so when I I've never done the Fringe because mm. different reasons and, and didn't need to, but I did a couple of nights of my tour up at the Fringe, and we stayed with her in Leith. Sunshine on Leith is my favourite. Anyway, she's amazing, yeah. and. She's just this brilliant woman who is so nice. You know, you can deal with different neurotic women in their 70s. She so know who's, knows who she is. She's an art teacher. Mm -hmm. she's, she's got a beautiful home full of art. And she's got an apple tree that has is, is got three different types of apples on it. Mm. And she took care of us so well when we were up in Edinburgh. And, you know, if, if I couldn't get a cab, she'd drive me in to, for my show. And she, she just put us up really well. There was no sort of issues she was she's caring and switched on and brilliant and cooked wonderful food for us and the kids loved her apple tree but she was dripping in apples she even gets to go <laughs> if she takes she she takes bags of them to the local zoo not edinburgh zoo but the one nearest to her yeah. and she's allowed in free because they feed them to the bears she don't know what to do with all these apples that apple cora slicer a mm. friend had it and then we've got it it is something that is creates disproportionate joy <laughs> you should put the apple in it both it cores it, peels it, slices it. Wow. And you and the kids love it and oh. she loved it. So we wanted to send we took her flowers when we got there. So we wanted to send her a thank you to Fiona. Oh, that's to, so, so that was sweet. a gift. So she really took care of us. This She's, is for you to manage your apples. But this is what I, this is the theme, right? So much of your stuff in trials and tribulations and challenges that you've talked about in your life, but you see in your Amazon purchases, the first thing you bought, the most uh, of, of Dan Hicks and his hot licks, right? <laughs> yeah. And the joy with which you, you talk about that that CD, yeah. right? And how good it was. And then the joy uh, that's sort of across everything. And there yeah. you are, the latest thing with this, um, with an Apple gadget, which is like, you know, that's the kind of Apple gadget I'm prepared to pay for. Other Apple Please gadgets Please get are one. Your boy, to see your boys who are on the verge of cynicism. because Yeah, they're that's teenagers. exactly. <laughs> They'll get a chafty on from it. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, all right. Listen, uh, Laura, this has been brilliant. And uh, there's just there's just been so much stuff. It's been so interesting to talk to you and meet you. And um, I feel like there's so many recommendations. Is there, is there one thing that we've mentioned over the show that you would say is like your number one item that's sort of... What's, the, what's been a favourite thing to revisit in the last hour or so? Um, oh, I've got... Um, my belly's rumbling. Um, let me all think. That talk of lipsticks made you hungry. Yeah, what would be the favourite thing to read? I mean, it's nice. It's funny to talk about faith. Actually, I feel like um, it's something most. I mean, I've got a joke that I struggle with my faith, not because. I don't believe in God, but because I'm white British, <laughs> that, you know, that I've got black friends. If their mum says they'll pray for me, I'll be like, thank you. That means the world to me. But if you went to your white friend's house and their mum said, I'll pray for you, love. Fuck's sake, Joan, pack it in, will you? I've seen the Hollyoaks about this. But so it's something that I'm almost. Um, not, it's not that I'm ashamed of, but I, I, it, it's, it was nice to talk about it yeah. and you to be so receptive and 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 encouraging about it because it is important. It is important. Yeah. It is important. And it's important for all of us to, um, especially now at the minute. It's 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 nice to think that we're all searching for the same thing in different ways, and it is just to to be loved and accepted. And we should. Yeah. And, and yeah. So I, I I believe in that. I, I like humans. Yeah. Yes. Most of them. Don't forget your piece of shit. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of My Auto Taster. Laura Smith's fantastic. You're the best. Um, are you on tour? What are you doing there? Are you I'm on tour. I'm on tour. I'm here for the tour. So, so I'm on tour, and I've got a big date in in I don't know. Uh, yeah. So I'm on tour till seventh November. The second leg of the tour. This tour's been huger than I could ever imagine so yeah. it is finishing at Indigo O2 on the 7th of November 7th of November yes oh, that's going to be an amazing gig Are you filming it um, I'm not going to film it there but I've got a DJ I've got a brilliant house and garage well he's not just a house and garage DJ he's the best DJ DJ Mr White he's the best uh -huh. and uh yeah, so it's, it will be a big party. It's going oh to be loads God. of great okay, stuff. Okay, 7th of November. And give Laura a follow. Smith with a Y, though, guys. Yeah. Don't forget that. Uh, Laura, thank you very, uh, Laura, thank you so much for sharing far too much on <laughs> today's episode of My Mate Bottle Toaster. Thank you. Thanks. It's my mate.